Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osuri. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, Fiji Navy to resurvey our waters. FCCC continues festive season surveillance. And contracts to be awarded soon for drainage work. From the studios of FBC Suva, Amrita Sagar. The Fiji Navy will focus on resurveying our waters in 2019 and prioritizing on areas in urgent need along our major sea lanes. Commander Navy Captain Humphrey Tawake says the main navigational routes used for sea lanes support trade and ensure the safety of navigation. Savara Tambor reports. Captain Humphrey Tawake says resurveying of our waters is one of their major focuses in 2019, along with boosting development in the outer islands. Uh, those are the areas that we're targeting, that we're trying to spread to other areas that uh, for development, uh, for our rural development within the, the islands, for wharf, for our local, uh, uh, say, if a company wants to build a wharf for its own uh, quarry. Tawaki says there are two areas of concentration early next year when RFNS Kadao becomes operational. We're targeting Benga, uh, Benga, and uh, next year will be Wanolevu. The passage uh, between uh, for the, the ships, uh, just because of the, uh, the activity that's up north as well, uh, up in uh, Nambuwalu, uh, between Nambuwalu and Natobi, and from Nambuwalu right up to, uh, to Malau. Currently, all British charts are used for navigating our waters. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. With this being the last weekend for shopping before Christmas, some traders have come under the spotlight for trying to dupe consumers. The Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission is investigating over 200 traders for non-compliance. And in one particular case, a trader has been caught selling Christmas cakes containing fungus. Rachel Nart with the details. The FCCC has received 50 complaints from the Western Division where Christmas cakes contain fungus. And what we are now doing is undertaking an investigation to find out what was the reason behind it. Uh, of course, the trader has blamed uh, humidity for this. FCCC still needs to go out and ensure that we have uh, checked everything to ensure this product was not expiry. The batch that was produced was produced in, uh, in a proper manner. All quality control checks were done. Another trader is being investigated for tempering with expiry dates. We have mobilized teams and uh, as we speak, our inspections are ongoing. We understand that this weekend will be a busy period. Our officers will be out on the field in numbers. We'll ensure that we are able to go out and inspect and ensure the market is uh, is proper. The Suva Retailers Association is also urging customers to be mindful. I'm very sorry that that happened. Uh, the traders are all aware of the rules and regulation. FCCC is a very efficient body. They've been doing the job. Uh, they don't usually just go and out fine. They must have seen this happening for a while. So traders need to be very careful. The Consumer Council has also carried out inspections, finding close to 50 traders engaging in unethical practices this festive season. Now both the consumer agencies are reminding customers to be vigilant while shopping and not to be lured by sales which could be a hoax to get expired goods off the shelf. Rachel Nahr, FBC News. Those responsible for drainage work in the central western and northern divisions will soon be given contracts. Minister for Waterways Dr. Mahendra Reddy says scoping work for this project is underway and actual work will begin in two weeks. Savara Tambor reports. The Waterways Ministry will first concentrate on drainage improvement in the non-sugarcane sectors. We will begin work of non-sugar areas in, 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 in probably two weeks' time, um, you know, given in light of the, um, the festive season, in Northern Division, in Central Division, and also Western Division, some of the areas that we've already done scoping. Okay. Now, other than that, in January, whole of January and probably first week of February, 
we will undertake scoping of the information that we have for sugar areas. The ministry had called for expressions of interest in August and received a good response from the contractors. Meanwhile, the minister says that they are also making plans for drainage improvement in the sugarcane areas. So this work will begin in middle of February. So entire middle of February, March, April, we will do drainage work, infill drainage work for sugarcane belt. For farms that we already have submissions, via the sector office or individually they gave it to us or through our own waterways office. So this work will be done. Dr. Reddy says the second round of scoping in those sugarcane sectors which were left will be carried out in May or June next year. Sabira Tambua, FBC News. Three people from Lotoka have died following a motor vehicle accident in Bar last night. The accident occurred along the King's Road at Navao in Bar, which involved a private vehicle and a bus. A 23-year-old man who was driving the private vehicle allegedly failed to stop and made a right turn in front of the bus, resulting in the accident. The three victims, which includes the driver, were family members. The victim's mother is currently admitted at the Lotoka Hospital, while a passenger from the bus is admitted at the Bar Mission Hospital. The road death toll currently stands at 66. Meanwhile, officers from the Police Special Response Unit yesterday assisted a family of seven after their vehicle veered off the road along the Nameli Meli stretch in Navua. Six children and one adult were treated by the officers at the accident site and were later taken to the Navua Hospital. The officers were traveling to the Western Division to assist with the festive season operations when they came across the incident. Officers from the PSRU who are trained in first aid and pre-hospital and incident control management use their knowledge to help the family. The victims of this accident have been treated and have been sent home. Still to come, Fijians urge to sign up for free EFL shares. And Christmas Spirit Hype South details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in the cash on the wrong and bullet fib. Number two, I am a serie. Oh, yeah, was it says a lambasa? On the teletain of our Roman and Bula FM, number two and serie. We have a Timeli, a Kuana Tau no Hinatoka, Teletakina of our Roman and Bula FM, number two and a serie. Never go find in a town of Singatoka, get on the Teletakan and Bula FM, number two and a serie. Bula FM, number two and serie. A number of passengers of the MV Spirit of Harmony bound for Nambawalu early this morning were stranded for several hours at the Natovi Jetty in Tailevu. FPC News understands that the reporting time was 6 a.m. However, the vessel did not leave the jetty. One of the passengers who spoke to FPC News said they were advised through a text message by Patterson Shipping that the trip was cancelled due to an engine problem. The passenger says they were then informed to wait for the MV Spirit of Love to return, which was uh, en route to Limbasa. Meanwhile, some passengers who had already made their bookings with the Spirit of Love's second trip were told to return on Monday. Another passenger who was infuriated and had travelled all the way from Navua in a taxi this morning to board the Spirit of Harmony also says that she was informed from the company Messenger that they will need to provide proof in a form of a receipt so they could be reimbursed. Attempts to get comments from Patterson Shipping remains unsuccessful. Speaker of Parliament Dr. Chiko Luveni has passed away. Closed government sources have confirmed that she passed away this morning. Dr. Luveni comes from the village of Nukuni on the island of Onoilao. She was the first Fijian woman to have graduated in dentistry and worked for the Ministry of Health for 20 years. In January 2008, Luveni was appointed Minister of Health and then as Minister of Social Welfare, Women and Poverty Alleviation. In 2013, Luveni indicated that she would stand for election under the Fiji First banner. Following the 2014 election, she was elected to Parliament as the 14th highest polling Fiji First candidate. She resigned her seat to become Speaker, the first Fijian woman to hold the position. 72-year-old Dr. Luveni was reappointed to the position following the 2018 election last month.
With over 130,000 Fijians qualifying to obtain free shares in Energy Fiji Limited, only 35,700 domestic users have applied. Chief Executive Hasmuk Patel says they'd like to see more applications so that Fijians can benefit from the opportunity. Catherine Krishna reports. Energy Fiji Limited is urging Fijians who qualify for these domestic non-voting shares to take advantage of the initiative. The government has set this up yes. so that all domestic electricity account yeah. holders benefit and they become part of EFL. And therefore, you know, there are some, I would say, good 80, 85,000 customers who can still qualify. And we are today actually urging all of them to come forward. They can approach now CSRL and go through the process and become a shareholder. South Pacific Stock Exchange says those interested can contact their subsidiary Central Share Registry Limited as they are the newly appointed trustees for EFL. Uh, for those who haven't picked up the shares at this point, please come forward and you can contact CSR from here on and we'll be holding that registry for you and, and for, to enable you to acquire those shares. EFL has non-voting shares worth $500 million and 5% has been allocated for those who are domestic users. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. It was last minute rush for many today who made an early visit to the supermarket getting all the goodies to put together delicious dishes for Christmas. Fijians needed to maneuver through the crowded market to get the produce though. Rachel Nart takes us to the market to see what the scene was like this morning. This is the common side for Suva's market, but today it was a little extra special with only two days remaining for Christmas. Some of the common produce that people were buying included dalo, coconuts, taro leaves, seafood and of course seasoned fruits. Market vendors say it's the time of the year when they make extra cash. Plenty of people come and buy the coconuts. Yesterday I come in selling coconut for... I've got uh, 60 coconut, so I get uh, $150. It's uh, going very fast. So we're selling our goods, they're selling the dalo, uh, banana, uh, roro, water. We are playing by. Seems like the spirit of Christmas joy had an impact on Fijian pockets as many were happy with the price of produce. Well, the price is okay, it's still the same. I think the prices are just the same. I don't think that there's any hype. Well, normally. I don't think the prices of goods are expensive this year. Actually, it seems the same as last year. The last minute shopping spree was evident not only in the market but across the capital city with people rushing to pick up their presents, Christmas cards or even make good on sales. Rachel Nath, FBC News. We're ahead in sports, Fiji 7s players reminded about... Dola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coroco, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. The Fiji Airways men's sevens players were reminded of certain rules that must be followed at all times before they broke camp for the festive season. Coach Gareth Baber says all the players need to be on the same page and understand the laws of the game. These players need to always maintain professionalism. Um, nobody has the right to wear the white jersey. They've got to do the thing, right things off the pitch. They have to do the right things in the training environment. And then when they get their opportunities to hold on to that jersey, they've got to hold on to it. So uh, everything I look at uh, is geared towards making sure that they do that. Uh, and then obviously that, that builds up the respect and trust within the group. Coach Gareth Baber says their win in Cape Town earlier this month is a result of the maturity of players after being closely scrutinized by game officials earlier on in Dubai. We're still able to produce the performances that we did in Cape Town, and that's off the maturity of the likes of Cali 
um, is it the maturity of some of those younger players who are coming in as well. And I think that that's the biggest positive I take from out from like some Cape Town and Dubai is that some of those young players have shown that they're able to play at this standard and have the maturity and behaviours necessary to do it. The team will return to camp later next week to prepare for the Hamilton Sevens that will be held in New Zealand on the 26th and 27th of next month. Koroi Tandulala, FBC Sports. Fiji is flying Fijians coach John McKeese's discussion on the insurance dispute between World Rugby and Premiership Rugby Limited continues. The heads of the Premiership Rugby Limited are not backing down in the insurance role of a player access ahead of the World Cup. Fiji-born winger Nicola Matawalu has signed a two-year contract to remain with the Glasgow Warriors. Baseball Fiji is now focusing on developing young players in a bid to expand the sport to other parts of the country. This is after they finished third at the Oceania Under-15 Championship in New Zealand earlier this year. Korei Tandulala reports. National baseball coach Kent Oshima says they will conduct a countrywide outreach program. Well, just now from inside the Suba, only five community we split baseball. But uh, I hope outside Suba and uh, all around uh, in Fiji we play baseball. However, acting Vice President Longabatu Tava says it is difficult to develop the sport without proper facilities. For me, yes, it's a facility because uh, baseball is not like uh, uh, any other sport. Uh, you know rugby is. is uh, you get a space, you get... Uh, the ball you can play rugby, but for baseball we need a better field, a level field where we minimize the injuries and we have the equipment, very expensive and uh, most of it is not available in the country. The side hopes to get a wild card entry for the 2019 Under-12 World Cup in Taiwan. Kuroi Tandulala, FBC Sports. Sean Johnson has given the Cronulla Sharks a piece of his mind that he isn't getting cold feet despite head coach Shane Flanagan being deregistered by the NRL. Still in Auckland, Johnson knew little about the situation, but Sharks captain Paul Gallen has been keeping him in the loop. Disgraced cricketer Steve Smith has spoken publicly for the first time since Matt's tearful apology for ball tampering. The Cloud and showers were experienced over the eastern parts and the interior of the larger islands, with a fine apart from isolated afternoon and evening showers and thunderstorms elsewhere. Taking a look in the west, mostly cloudy and humid conditions prevailed. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, cloudy and humid with scattered showers over a few places. And all the way up north, it was fine, apart from afternoon or evening showers and possible thunderstorms. At sea, moderate east to southeast winds, moderate seas. And for the tides, high tide will be at 6.13 a.m. and low tide at 12.42 a.m. Sunrise will be at 6.28 as we look toward tomorrow, some showers and isolated thunderstorms over the eastern and interior parts of the larger islands is expected. Elsewhere, you can expect fine apart from afternoon or evening showers and possible thunderstorms, much as today. And looking further on to Monday, cloudy periods with some showers over the eastern and interior parts of the larger islands. Recapping the main stories, Fiji Navy to resurvey our waters. FCCC continues festive season surveillance and contracts to be awarded soon for drainage work. Now, for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment, and this week we're asking, are you satisfied with the price of goods this Christmas? You can always visit our FBC website to answer. You can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email. FBC News at fbc.com.fj. That's FBC News at fbc.com.fj. Or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. Or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight. Have a safe night. Until next time, good night.
Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lambasa. I'm Sonami Nasori Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Baba Singh Alliance. Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Pritika from Jackson Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot.